Hello, my friends, and welcome. Welcome to week four of our April poetry celebration. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Kate Chadbourne. I'm a poet, a singer, a storyteller, and a teacher. And I run the Bardic Academy, which is a school for creators, writers, musicians, and people like you. And I'm hosting this celebration in conjunction with the journal makers, Jumping Fox Design. They make beautiful tools for writers that I use and love, and I'll show you mine today. So it's been a wonderful, another wonderful week of poems and a month, and it's hard to believe, my friends, but we have one more week. So I wanna jump right in to our poems for the week. Well, before I do, let me just encourage you at the start, send poems, even if it's your first time sending me poems, I would be so glad to receive them. I write back to everyone. Uh, how do you do that? You just write to me, kate at katechadborn.com. Uh, please send your poems in the body of your email or in one attachment by Friday, that's the 29th of April at five o'clock. And all of that information will be in the comment just below the video. So last week, you might recall that our theme in the our broader theme for the month is be a poet and last week we explored sensitivity and sensibility specifically deepening your sensitivity and cultivating your sensibility and we had some wonderful poems in response to that i want to start out right from the start i the the spark last week was to write a poem from the perspective of someone or something else. And my dear friend, Cynthia, went for it. And here it is, it's called Ticked. Black, I am an irresistible, infinitesimal speck. I grow from thin into thick as if by magic, when a warm bed is discovered, which encourages the instinct to burrow and draw. I am pleased with my results. I position myself to funnel some delectable nectar. Instead, an oddly shaped white cup appeared with a funnel of its own, scoops me up from underneath my wriggling, shimmery body. This dance could go on for some time. Yet after more delectable nectar is spilled, a new type of bed appears, a jar, cold and hard, ready for my transport and fatal end. That is dramatic and wonderful. I love it so much. Oh, thank you, Cynthia. What a pleasure. Now, last week I shared with you uh, Wes McNair, who I regard as our, as our poetry patron saint, um, his beautiful poem about his mother's handwriting so he sent along two poems, uh, I'm, I'm gonna share a new one today, about aging. And some of you responded directly to that, I think. Um, my friend Deb wrote this poem, it's called I'm In Here. And I wanna share, she wrote a little note about it. She said, it's been a while since I listened to the TED Talk by Jill Bolte Taylor, who wrote a book called My Stroke of Insight. She's a, neurobio uh, sorry, a neurologist who had a stroke and got to see what it was like inside. People who have a stroke or debilitating event are, unless brain dead, in there. So now here's Deb's poem. It's called, I'm in here. I'm in here. I'm in here. Please keep coming by. Please keep touching. Please keep saying my name and your name and our children's names and friends' names. Please keep reading poetry and singing and making jokes. I'll be there soon. I'm pulling on the threads one by one by one that wove this fabric that binds the me you knew inside alone. This is no stroke of luck. I'm in here. I'm in here. I'm in here. And my friend Betsy, a wonderful singer and artist, shared this one and it's called his smile. He wants to know, when can we go? Has the mechanic finished our car? With a reassuring hug, I pretend it's not done. Driving him back, I hope, toward me. 
Such things stay behind in his clouded mind. Duty of care, still a voice strong. The days I can visit, I bring love he can't get. All that matters now is his smile. Such fine feeling uh, by these poets, and that is our theme of last week of sensitivity, for sure. Now I want to give you a gift of Wes's poem on the same topic, and it's called Clem's Stroke. So again, this, this poem comes from a book that is going to be released in October of this year, 2022, by Godin Press. They publish beautiful books, and it's called Late Wonders. That's Wes McNair's book, Late Wonders. I can't wait. I know you're going to love it too. So here is, is Wes's poem that he sent for us, and it's called Clem's Stroke. A silent lightning cracked him in two, one leg dangling a foot that can't feel the floor when he walks, the other guiding it, a zigzag dance, and he the impresario with his cane. My uncle Clem, the military man, once so tucked in nobody could dig him out, now unable to tuck himself or trust his slack tongue with only what he wants it to say. Yet see him smile with bunny teeth when he whispers to the new girlfriend he sits beside and the feeling that rises into his finger as he not quite touches her white hair arriving despite himself out in the open, his little death bringing him to life. So many ways to see this, aren't there, my friends? So powerful. Thank you to Wes and thank you to Deb and to Betsy for exploring that important part of life. Now, cultivating sensibility, uh, my friend Tricia sent this along and it's called blue-tailed skink. She suggested letting something new into our lives. I was not planning on the blue-tailed skink in the bedroom. <laughs> I love that. He was traveling against the baseboard faster than I can run. Be like the skink. Enter a new world, a different place. Run like crazy for a while. Let others run with you. Let them scream out loud, fill the air with shouts and hand waving. Even if you are transported back to your own space, take time, find the stone wall, lie down, feeling the warmth that greets you, feeling the familiar, then get ready to run again. That's a wonderful poem. Uh, that is certainly cultivating a sensibility, opening your, your frame of reference to another life. Uh, and it also kind of uh, works with our idea of sensitivity, of seeing through others' eyes, which is, I think, so powerful. I love this little poem by my friend Kathleen. Uh, this is certainly sensibility, is taking, having concern and care for others in the world. And this little poem, she says, is dedicated to children everywhere and the child who dwells in us all. And it is absolutely in response to the war in Ukraine. Kathleen mentioned in her note to me that there are hand gestures that go with this poem. I can only imagine the first, and I will do that one. Here is my hand held over my heart, wishing all war would finally depart. End the destruction, stop the bombs, reinstate peace, bring back calm. So I like that little poem, again, because it reaches us beyond our world here, our reality here, to think about what's happening for people in other parts of, of the world, in other parts of life. So fantastic poems, everybody. I want to share one more um, by Mike, because I thought this might give you a spark and something to play with yourself. He calls this word ring, and you'll understand in just a second why that is. Word ring. Sky blue, blue sea, seahorse, horse play, playhouse, 
houseboat, boat hook, hook up, upturn, turn down, downtown, town hall, hallway, way big, big sky, sky blue. Right, so that's that circular structure and it just, it's one to each, but the sky blue, right? We start with sky blue and we end with sky blue. So it brings us all full circle around. So you might enjoy playing with a form like that. I thought it was so clever and fun and also ancient. Um, the Irish love that, that circular structure. So much fun. So let me just show you again. I'm still working with my little tools. Um, this is the beautiful Jumping Fox design notebook. You can see the, the fox here and the lovely uh, linen of it. I love it. Um, I just keep writing. Again, these are very scrabbly, scratchy poems. And here, it's, it's really, I, our theme this week is friendship and poetry friendship. And, you know, I'm a musician. I know many of you are musicians. And I certainly regard my musical instruments as friends and collaborators. Likewise, I consider my books, my pens. This is the beautiful binder from Jumping Fox Design. And just to say again, this is one of the prizes. Um, if you've been sending me poems, you are eligible for a prize. And this is one of them that you could win. I regard these increasingly as, this, you know, I've been using these for the month and they are increasingly becoming friends to me. Uh, one thing that I've, I've added this week, in addition to some poems in here, both drafty poems and, and revised poems is like, what have we been doing? Can you see that? Um, this is what we've been covering, be a poet. I'll, I'll share that with you, kind of, that's the, the ground that we've been covering, you know, the first week, what is a poet? The second week, wonder and wander. The third week, sensitivity and sensibility. And this week is all about poetry friendship. So I am very blessed in my life to be friends with many poets. I, I admire many poets, I correspond with poets. But I have two who are so dear to me, uh, with whom I share ice cream and swims in the sea and getaways and sitting down and taking time together to write. And those are my friends, Tricia and Cheryl. Both of them are accomplished, devoted, practicing poets. I adore them. I feel so lucky. We've, we've been friends for decades now. And when we get together, we write poems. So I invited them to write a poem, each of them, on the topic of poetry friendship. And I want to read first this one by my friend Tricia, our friend Tricia, Tricia, Cheryl, and Kate, the three amigos. Um, this is called Tea Poets, An Enduring Friendship. We meet, we greet, we catch each other up. We drink our tea and have a little sup. So glad in turn to hear the goings on, so truly pleased each face to look upon. A lovely couple of hours of time to simply sit and be, so grateful for the tea poets who come to be with me. We lift each other up in our deepest joys and cares and know that if we need them, the others will be there. And at the very ending of our time with one another, we write five minute poems and share them with each other. There is no greater happiness when writing poetry than sharing with my tea poets the words we write times three. I love that. Thank you, Tricia. So that, that gives you a little um, glimpse into the way that we work together. We really, we, I would say we talk 97% of the time and drink tea or have an ice cream. Uh, and then we spend time, we just, we say, what do you want to write about? Okay, let's write about um, this moment. Let's write about the pine trees. Let's write about one time Cheryl and I wrote about cheese. And we set the, we set the timer for five minutes and off we go. And so much happens. And it's so delicious to write with them like that. My friend Cheryl wrote a beautiful poem called When Blessed with Friends Who Write Poetry. Um, there's a lot in this poem about our life together. Um, a, about a time, well, I'm, I'm going to read a part of it to you. It's, it's a long poem. It's a beautiful poem. It's full of life and devotion and humor. 
Uh, I'm going to read just part of it that gives you a sense of us and it gives you a sense of Cheryl's um, style of writing poems. Plunging into the salty cold waves of coastal Maine, calling ourselves giddy middle-aged mermaids, lying on our backs on the deck at night to watch the August leonids flash and fly right by, thinking life can't get much better than this. When our ancient poetry mascot dog risks her fragile 14-year-old limbs and life to climb the steep, slippery wooden stairs all the way to the top, to come out there and sit silently gazing amidst us, and life gets even better in that moment. And it does every time we take pause and dive in quiet, like we did once in the ocean waves of Maine, to close our eyes and deeply look at all of life through the lens of friendship and our poems over time reminding ourselves and one another as poetry companions to remember this circle of friendship, who love life and love each other and love the world even better through making the most of every alive and awake moment together, and then picking up our pen to honor them while we are still here in our daily life transformations, knowing even, in, even death is a part of it all, still clutching our paper and pens and each other's hands as life livers, love givers, and poet friends. And since over and over, we recognize that life is precious and short, we invite the whole world to join us. I love that so much, and I'm so grateful to my dear poetry friends, Tricia and Cheryl, for jumping in and for so many years of writing poems and loving poems and loving each other. So I would like to give you uh, a spark for the week, and that is to write a poem about friendship or a poem about a friend or a poem about a friendship that you have. So think about that, a, a friendship through poetry or just a friend, however you like to take that. And I'd like to share um, a poem that I wrote, and it's, it's dedicated actually to Jamie, Karen, and Emma with whom I spend uh, Friday afternoons writing poems right now. Um, Jamie and Emma are young poets and Karen is my friend. Uh, we're mentors to these young poets. And this poem is also for my dear friends, Cheryl and Tricia. And it's called, My Friends Are Writing Poems. Each in her space, each with her words, each with her stories and her oceans, each with her mountains and her deep ravines, each with a ghost on her shoulder and a long apron of sunlight stretching forward from her words. My friends are writing poems and I can feel them being born. We are midwifing poems together, each of us a mother and a midwife each willing to step into the shadow land to feel the quickening of life that comes of welcoming the strange-eyed God who brings lightning and flowers, who asks us to stand still in our terror long enough to receive his wild gifts and let them administer their mythologies to our mutable selves so that we gain wings or a trailing of ivy that is always fresh and green. My friends are writing poems. How I love their purposeful silence. How I honor the way they turn toward their soul's languages. How I cherish their songs and parables, their honest quests and their generous sorrows. My friends are writing poems and their writing opens a sunny meadow where I join them today. And so I rejoice to say that together and alongside one another, we are friends who write our hearts. Now, my friends, that includes you now. We are friends who are writing poems together, and I'm delighted and honored that you're here. It's beautiful. So my spark to you for the week is to make a poetry friend. Invite someone to tea, 
invite someone to a Zoom meeting, invite someone to, to sit outside on a blanket with you and set the timer for five minutes and write a poem together. Uh, talk to each other about poems that you love. Share books of poems that inspire you. Tell, tell about the, the poets who inspire you. It is such a generative and beautiful way to be friends with people. It's, it lifts you up and it nourishes us. And I'm so grateful for all of you poetry friends. I'm so grateful for the time we're spending this month. I'm grateful for all of you for sharing your poems with me. Let's take it further, you know? I also wanted to share with you years ago, this is a book called Women in Poetry, uh, Writing, Revising, Publishing, Publishing and Teaching, edited by Carol Smallwood. And I, I wrote an article that's in this book and it's about poetry friendship because I think it's the best thing going. My article is called Mirrors and Muses, Poetry with Friends. And I just want to give you one idea from this article. Uh, my idea was acting as a mirror to your friends, listening very closely. You can do this even with non-poet friends, but certainly with poet friends. Listen, pay very close and loving attention to your friends and listen to their particular language. There is so much beauty in the language of people just as they tell their stories. Mirror it back. You know, you might hear somebody say something, it, it, uh, for instance, in this, I said, reflect the brilliance back to your friend. Wow, did you hear yourself? Lonely for the sky. That would make an excellent line in one of your poems. Give those things back. When you listen like that, for one thing, you really grow the respect and admiration and love. You deepen the friendship, but you also show the ingenuity, the ingeniousness of your friend. And that feels amazing for both of you. And things come from that. So I'd love just to, so that's the dare is make a poetry friend. And this is one way that you might enjoy doing that. Reflecting your, your friend's ingenious, beautiful, vibrant language back to her or him. So I hope you, I hope you play with that. Before I say goodbye today, I want to tell you about something I'm doing in the month of May that might be of interest to you. I'm running a new course called Sacred Animals of the Celts. We'll be playing with salmon, swan, and horse, and looking at traditional materials about those animals and using them to create and to explore. And it's going to be fun. Uh, it'll be a small group. Every single person will receive some attention and we'll just enjoy ourselves. So it's three weeks in May. If you're interested in checking that out, I will put a link in the comment under this video and you can go take a look. If you're really interested, and I'm, I'm speaking to you poets, I do have a special code for a savings on the tuition. If you write me a note, I'll be glad to share it with you. So that would be so much fun to have you. So thank you so much, my friends, for being here this week, being here all month, celebrating poetry with me. It's really been marvelous. We have one more week and it is not too late if you are thinking of jumping in. Now is a great time. It's always the right time for poetry. So let's this month and always be poets. Thank you again for watching. Enjoy the week of poetry.